welcome to this special conversation. The entire country, or should I say the entire world, has been outraging about the ghastly episode which played out at the RG Car Hospital in Kolkata. With me tonight, here in our studios at Squirrels.in, one of the foremost medical practitioners of our country, Dr. Anil Kohli, former chairperson of the Dental Council of India. Thank Great you. pleasure to have you today with Thank us. Thank you. It's, it means a lot to us, Dr. Kohli, that uh, eminent doctors like you, and you're a dentist yourself, you all have been tracking what has happened at this Ajikar hospital so closely. So firstly, let me ask you to respond to the incident, to this entire ghastly episode, purely as a medical professional. Is this the lowest that you have seen, sir? This is a very sad incident which has happened in the Calcutta hospital. And in Indian history, I think it is the worst case I have ever heard in last 40, 50 years. Mm. We used to hear the people, somebody slapped the doctor, somebody kicked the doctor because his patient died or something. Mm. But here, if you see a daughter, a student, female student of a medical school being raped and killed when she was on the duty, nothing worse than can happen. And what we are showing to the world and which era we are living is very, very painful for any person and especially for us being a medical people, we feel badly hurt. What is this case really about, Dr. Kohli? Is it a story of corruption? Is it a story of lack of safety of medical professionals? Is it an isolated case? Or is there a pattern in the medical space which comes through this incident? Honestly speaking, if you ask me, it is an isolated case. More than that, we feel sorry when we see it is being politicized. Mm. Such cases, irrespective which party I belong, which state I belong, we should all stand together. Mm. And the punishment should be so harsh, so harsh and time bound, mm. so that it should serve a lesson for anyone who can even thinking of going into those lines. But why do you say it's an isolated case? Because look at the sheer tragedy. You know, here is RG Car Hospital, right? And the entire country is outraging. Just a couple of days back, you would have seen in Bareilly, again, an allegation has been made against a doctor. So my question, sir, is this. You're saying that political parties are politicizing it. Yes. Is it not the harsh truth that there has always been a lot of politics in the medical fraternity, in the medical field? See, why I did say that it is an isolated case? Because this is one of the rarest cases where you have seen the girl has been raped many times and being killed. She is no more. She belongs to your average family. And look at the agony for the parents. Let me, let me tell you very interesting. Hmm. Now, after seeing this, if you ask me personally, my both daughters are doctors. If I have to send my daughter to a medical school, that to a government school, I have to think twice. That's a that's a really sad reflection. Yeah. If if people like you, you know, who are in the field, if you have to start rethinking, what about this national task force which the Supreme Court speaks about? I mean, are, are we going to convert hospitals, doctors, into police stations, into army battalion points? Is that the solution? See, task force is one of the good move by the Supreme Court because the governments were not acting. Neither the state government. Not the central government. What do you want so, the governments to do, sir? Governments to do, firstly, you know, if you look into the constitution of India, mm. when it comes to the health, everybody mm. talks, the health is a state subject. Mm. Now the buck is being passed from the center to the state and the state to the center. Mm. So there is no universal law in the country which controls. Even you look at the, when we talk about if there are two different governments, one government in the center and one government in the state mm. and when it comes to allocation of funds mm. or implementing certain schemes mm. which are being nice schemes being proposed by the central government are not being uh, implemented in the state government where there are different governments and mm. the vice versa. Mm. So there has to be a universal law in the country which should govern the medical education, the healthcare system, other things and even the punishment. Like you talked about uh, what, but why, 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 no, no, I'm talking about the, this being task force being yes, formed by the government and you said like how it will work. Now, 
at least now task force they have made a task force task force is going to what they are going to form a go guidelines mm -hmm. and guidelines have to be implemented who implement who does not but this is a right move doing something but more than that if you ask me it is a gender bias gender bias yeah how, Please how? i'll tell you how because we don't look like on the female still for ages the females are not being treated equally in this country uh -huh. so that is one of the reason that they are always being seen as an object uh -huh. so mindset of the people in the country has to change and which has to come from the beginning what i mean by beginning in the school we have to be taught moral boosting moral has to be there where both both genders are equally treated and your sister my sister my brother my sister they should be given equal opportunity we talk about nari shakti we talk about equality in the parliament after 75 years even today how many female, female uh, mps we have in the parliament and where where if you talk about the gender bias and other thing we are 50 50 mm -hmm. and we want equal in the armed forces we want equal in every every field in life mm -hmm. but when it comes to the reality still mindset mansikta jo hai wo change honi chahiye nahi wo to sahi baat hai sir but ye to you know wo jaise amitabh bachchan ke dialogue hai na ki system mein sab gadbad hai ye to wo wali aap baat kar rahe hain because if i was to counter this argument slightly and if i was to say that the real problem is this that the medical profession perhaps has now become one of the most corrupt institutions in the country. Is that a correct assertion or am I being too harsh? No, it's a bit harsh, but I'll tell you why. Mm. Question is why. Mm. See, everything on the demand and supply. Mm. When the demand is more, supply is less, likelihood of corruption. Let me give you an example. We had very limited college, uh, medical colleges and dental schools when I started my medical education. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about 70s. Right. Today, it has multiplied many folds. But the problem is very good for the country as we are progressing. We are one of the biggest uh, economy of the world. So we are progressing and we are one of the nation which has the youngest force in the country. Mm -hmm. But the problem is opening the college is no problem. But uh, do we have the enough teachers? But sir, tell me, we, we've had, you've been the chairperson of Dental yeah, Council of yeah, India. Yeah. It got involved in all kinds of controversies. There was a Medical Council of India. It got involved in all kinds of controversies. We moved away from that system. Yes. The purpose of moving away from that system was to bring in greater transparency. Parency, yes. Why is it that you do not have the transparency even today in medical profession? See, that's why I'm, I resigned from the <laughs> Dental Council. I was out. But that's why this uh, National Medical Commission, National Dental Commissions have come for betterment. Anything happening, it takes time. Mm. And better times comes. And that's one of the thing reason because uh, there was a corruption, there was a, no transparency. And as you very rightly said, there has to be a transparency and accountability. So because I'm saying, the sir, people. if you say that this is a question of gender sensitization, then that's a systemic point to make about every profession. Yeah. If there is discrimination which is taking place against women, women want to be, let's say, in combat roles yeah. in Indian Army, Indian yeah. Air Force. So, you know, that kind of uh, agitation continues there too. Are we unwilling to really take the bull by its horns by refusing to acknowledge that actually in medical colleges, which are based massively on capital fee, on capital donations, in hospitals, where there is a massive nexus which exists between top doctors, top brands and insurance companies. Why are we unwilling to acknowledge that this is the real problem? Is that the real problem? See, there are two things. When we talked about the gender bias, that I talked about the violence in all the workplaces against the females. That was nothing to do with the education or the medical profession. That we were addressing the issue. There is a violence against the females all over any workplace, whether it is a hospital reception, it is a marketplace, it is a working place, any place you take these things are happening. Even on the roadside, if you uh, other day heard somebody being stopped on the auto rickshaw hmm. and we had the, uh, uh, this case which we had it uh, in Kolkata, in, in hmm. Kolkata in Delhi, hmm. we had uh, yeah, yeah, that unfortunate Nirbhaya uh, episode which had Nirbhaya, happened. Nirbhaya came. So if you look at that, so it is definitely the people's mindset. Now coming to the other part, other part is I fully agree with you, transparency and the willingness of the political 
will has to be there to change the system and political people those who have their own institutions in medical education other thing so they have to understand and that once the transparency comes and accountability comes i think system will fall in line and we will be better we are heading with a good prime minister and i look forward for better things for the medical profession see best of the people go into the medical profession mm. but i think trend is going to change after seeing all these incidences mm. the people will think hey, which profession is better let's you know look at some of the recommendations which have come out in the aftermath of what has happened in uh, the sarjikar hospital there is a view that women doctors should not be put on night shifts do you do you think this is like you know no this is not the solution i'll tell you why this is not the solution mm. when we were studying we didn't had even 5% of the girls coming into the medical or dental institutions 90% was the boys and today the trend has changed more than 60% of the females are joining the medical institutions and if you look at the nursing and the pharmaceutical and the other uh, services they are much bigger number 60 to 70% the moment you cut down on the num- uh, working hours of these uh, professionals into the workplace do you think we can run we will paralyze the medical system mm-hmm. and ultimately end of the day who is the sufferer is the common man who is the sufferer now if the doctors do go on strike it definitely affects to the common man of the society who needs if somebody has to go for a surgery and doctor is on a strike just imagine what is the situation mm-hmm. it's not right on the part of the doctor to go on the strike but it is not right on the part of the society also to beat up or kill to the doctor how do you resolve you know repeatedly we see stories coming from bihar or certain parts of uttar pradesh certainly more in the hindi heartland where say a family which unfortunately ends up losing one of its members the family always questions the doctor the doctor gets beaten up the doctor says this is a law and order problem is this a law and order problem is a systemic problem or simply put could it be that the doctors are also at fault maybe because doctors are ill equipped to give the medical treatment which they seem to be offering to some patients in certain cases so there are two different things mm. see one is the death of a patient mm. no doctor is not a god doctor do his best but if doctor is negligent and he has done some negligence on his part then he is answerable mm. but on the same part the public should also have to understand that there are certain things which are beyond anybody's control sure so we we have to understand i think it is the basic problem we have to change our mindset and we have to learn the discipline the respect for each other and understand everyone has to be honest with himself would you deny the fact that there is a massive nexus which is at play across the country between certain doctors certain pharma companies certain private brands it is because of this nexus that this lack of transparency that we're trying to argue continues in our system see it's difficult for me to answer but government has blocked these loopholes by not allowing any pharma company to give any benefits to the doctors hmm. and there may be cases see like we have 10 lakh doctors now if a 5 or 10 are doing the whole community cannot be blamed hmm. Hmm. but everywhere these things are there in the society any profession or anywhere okay what about what about the caste angle dr kohli sometimes i wonder you know rahul gandhi wants a caste census the bjp is down to 246 because there's a feeling that certain sections of the dalit community or obc community moved away is there a like you talk about gender imbalance in gender yeah. bias is there a caste bias question in the medical profession if you ask me in any field merit should be the first criteria i am i am advocating the merit sure but What does it happen but but i am coming to that point but if you look into our society and as we have grown up there was a reservation in our constitution i don't deny but where the merit comes the any benefit you want to give to any person who is not up to the obc is other thing you give them the free education you give them the free books but when it comes to the merit they should be on the same platform and they should compete with the same way as we do how how will it ever happen sir because you know there are government colleges there are medical uh, private colleges there yeah. are governments yeah. reservation yes. are you advocating that in the medical field there should be no reservation if you ask me in the armed forces we don't have any reservation mm. so why not in the medical field 
medical field you you provide them free education like education is very costly in the private but if a person who is of the not from the that rich family and he qualifies and he is an obc or he is a reserve category give him a free education i am not will not object on that give him a free uh, books and everything give him everything hmm. but when it comes to the merit if you want the quality then over the years you have to like we we have more than 50% reservation in the country already sure. and the people are thinking for more than that in like tamil nadu has more than 65% hmm. so that's so that I will, I will disagree okay final question <laughs> then to you dr goli you know you're a dentist uh, yeah. and a rather reputed one in that i sometimes get a sense sir that in our country there is no discourse there is no education when it comes to oral hygiene yeah. dental hygiene is that a problem i'm very happy you raised this issue hmm. now let me take you back oral health or any dental problem is the last priority for any person in the country whether it is a political side or it is a common, common man. man why hmm. because people think teeth are 32 so agar ek chala bhi gaya to kya farak padta but that's not true so everything travels from the mouth and mouth is the gateway to your whole body Mm-hmm. now there are many diseases which are can be detected by looking into the mouth mm-hmm. so for ages we have never given an importance but over the years as we have more civilized as the people are moving from the rural to the urban area people have some money to spend mm-hmm. oral health is getting importance because we are the youngest nation and today boys girls working and when you go to the work you want to look smart you want to smile and you want to have a, a nice smell from your mouth well i'll tell you for the first 35 years of my life i never, I never went to a dentist it. right till till i ran into you yeah. you know uh, and, and you're right so for the benefit of all our young viewers see somebody falls sick you get a viral infection or something you have fever you go to a doctor yeah. you take medicine yeah. you cure yourself yeah. how should you be looking after your oral hygiene okay. i mean you brush yeah. all right but beyond that what are, give us one or two signs that we should be looking out okay for. okay i'll give you four a's right first a awareness which has to be brought into the society and into the masses how it can be brought by media by print media and you and me people like sitting here talking then second is the availability now availability means Okay, it is should be available to the common man in the remote place, hmm. right? And third is the affordability. Hmm. The people should be able to afford it, which is where the insurance companies then come into play. Come to there is no insurance in this country, hmm. so in especially insurance then coming to the dental there is hardly anyone. The insurance. And the fourth point was accessibility. Hmm. It should be accessible to the. common man and accessibility can be provided by the government reaching to the masses and giving them at the doorstep the dental treatment as they are providing the medical treatment or vaccination yeah all right dr kohli thank you so much for coming and uh, and spending thank you. some time thank you it was wonderful to great